was like, wanted to do the first one. I, I want to, there's some sort of premise that I want to see. Okay, we we'll also just connect to this Wi Fi and. Uh, And you can actually go to uh, 10.42.0.1 colon 8000 and you can actually download everything from there. So, should I just write it here or you guys can see my address? I think I should write it. I'm not seeing the SSID. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so you are not able to see the SSID? Uh, I'm unable to connect to this. I can see it here. Okay, I'm going to try to connect to the ACID. Okay, that's fine. Is it a hidden? No, it's not. So, uh, does anyone know how to close a Wi-Fi network? Okay, edit connections, I guess. Okay, cool. So, Wi-Fi security is set to none. And so, you guys should be able to connect it without any password. Can anyone actually make a hotspot? Yeah, that might be easy.
Okay. So, if you guys face any problem, feel free to just. Yeah. Um, I just want to this. Let's see. Let's see. I'm actually pretty sure I have one. I just need a count. The it's, it's it's on the track. I think it's just that I'm not logging into like this. Yeah. 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 The uh, there is actually a tutorial on GitHub. Here is the tutorial. Okay. If you guys are not able to see it, okay. So just go ahead and clone it. You guys should be able to access the internet too. This one and download it. Okay. that you guys need just just clone it and all the details are here okay so let me give you a, uh, a brief introduction about what this is about so this is actually a combined workshop of Simpa and PyDive 
and uh, Simba is actually a computer algebra system. So it actually does computations uh, based on symbols. So it contains everything from calculus, mathematics, to physics, and everything in between. And PyDai is actually uh, it was basically the physics module of SimPy, but it actually had so much thing extra which were not symbolic. So uh, they actually created a separate organization which we call PyDai, and they actually. Uh, SimPy is actually one part of the SciPy stack. So SciPy stands for uh, Scientific Python, and uh, it in it includes uh, 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 SimPy, NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, and uh, IPython. So uh, that's about it. So you guys need to actually install the uh, SciPy stack, which you guys should be able to do by in installing the Anaconda, which is being transferred to you by the USB drives. So, if anyone needs an Anaconda, just pay me. Okay. Order. And it's actually available on the Wi-Fi too. Uh, it's working on the Macs at least. Okay. And after installing uh, all the, actually running the script of installing anaconda you guys need to update the, update your packages and here's the command on the github so we will be using ipython notebooks which is actually a very awesome way of running python in your browser and we will be running tutorials over there. So it includes all the IPython notebooks that we will be using. This GitHub uh, repository. So anyone, anyone facing any issues there? No, no. Okay. I have access. Yeah, I'm just uh, you will be able to access it after the conversation. Yes. You are So, is there anyone? Who still don't have the Anaconda installation via the USB or the hotspot? You don't have it, just just once. The USB, sir. You have the Anaconda? Yeah. Who doesn't have the Anaconda? Uh, okay. I can try one of these. So, there is an EXE file. Okay. And if you guys need, I can actually make a hotspot in my uh, mobile too. Okay, so there are actually two hotspots. One is named Sahil, and you can connect to it to actually access the uh, internet. Another is AKTech. Yeah, so there are two hotspots. One is AK Tech and one is Sahil. So you guys should be able to access the internet uh, to actually connect to these uh, hotspots. Okay. Yeah. But if you don't use, uh, uh, don't download uh, torrents or just go to YouTube because uh, we have. Limited internet access. 
So just go to this ID and just clone it. Uh, this is repository on GitHub. Anyone facing any issues? Uh, sorry, are these, are these uh, dependencies also available by? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Most of them are, right? Yes. Oh. Yeah. No, no. All of them are. Yes. I'm just using but, but it's actually easy to use an account now. Yeah, I've not used that account. Oh. Okay. It's taking a while. Yeah. Anyone facing any issues, just make some noise. And just let me know that you're facing an uh, issue. Okay, so until you guys actually download stuff and just uh, have some setup ready, we can actually go through the basics of uh, IPython notebook or the, I mean the basics in general. Okay. Okay. So here are some commands. So you run IPython notebook by running IPython space notebook in your terminal uh, and it will actually uh, open all the files which are in that directory and the extension of IPython notebook is actually IPYND. Uh, so I don't know if I can actually show you guys. Uh, so. Okay, you want to copy the slides in this uh, copy tutorial slides in this one, right? Okay, if I have one. Okay, so this is how an iPython notebook looks like. You can add new cells and the cells can be just text, headings or code and you can actually run your Python code in the notebooks. Okay, and there are some shortcuts uh, to, if you press enter it will actually add a new cell and uh, shift enter will actually run the code in the cell uh, which can be just text or heading or the Python code. Okay, and Control Enter will execute all uh, cells in place and escape uh, an edge to display the keyboard shortcuts. So, yeah. So let's see here that this is a this line is a Python code, right? And I can actually run it by uh, by pressing Shift plus Enter, and it actually import it. So are you facing any issues? How do you start the cycle again? Sorry? How do you start the Jupyter cycle again? Uh, type Jupyter notebook. Jupyter space notebook. Oh, Jupyter space notebook. Or it's, no, no, just IPython notebook. Both the work now. Oh, okay. 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 IPython notebook. Actually, IPython notebook command is definitely. Uh, I'm sure you want to be using Jupyter notebook. Here I should have Jupyter space. Okay. Okay. No, 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 no. Inside the Jupyter. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. Because, so where is this thing saying? <laughs> I 
So now so it will look all the uh, files in your current directory. And if the issues are IP by ND, it will open them as no choice. Oh, so essentially I've got all of this Yeah. Uh, no, you don't have IP. But it should be. It should be. So you basically run the EXE file of the anaconda that you're to Yeah, if you were to Okay, so it's just this part. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay. Oh, I just have to kill it. Okay. So, awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, so just change you into this IP file that you told. Yeah, and then once it's installed, just uh, run these commands. So, okay, so all the details are there in the repository's readme file. You guys can see that uh, just. Uh, Okay, so it's all there into the readme file. So just install the anaconda that was given to you as a script or an exe file. Then run these two commands and you guys will have all the packages. You guys can check if you have all the packages by running python. Check env.py which is into the repository. And if it exits without any error, then you know that you have all the packages you need. So once you install, you need to run these two commands. Do I do this from inside the shell? No, no, it's just normal terminal. Okay. So you access conda from the terminal. Okay. Yeah. It's just you have that you don't do that. It's all good. So you can do that with the data. You can do that with the data. So, iPython notebook is very awesome, and you guys should definitely check it out. Uh, Okay, 
So there is no enough ID. Okay, dollar. Okay, cool. Just uh, one more thing, guys. Dollar is just the prompt that you get in the terminal to just let you guys know that you have to run this command into the terminal. It's not the part of the command. Okay, so you guys just run from the conda. If you guys uh, need the instructions, it's into the readme file, into the repository that you guys just clone, and we can just start it. So everything is up and running for you? Okay. Okay. So, so once you are up and running, and you do IPython notebook into that directory, you will see something like this. So it will contain all the notebooks, and if you are seeing a folder named notebooks, just uh, just click on that folder and you will see all the notebooks there. Okay, so we have a lot of stuff here. Okay, so, uh, okay, let's just start here. <coughs> okay, so what we will do is actually not go into that much detail into the physics or the dynamics because um, we just want to give you an overview and it will, uh, I don't think it will be worth it. Okay, so, so what we are doing is actually, uh, we are dealing with the rigid body dynamics. So we know uh, the uh, Newton's uh, second law, which is actually uh, basically, uh, which basically comes down to force is equal to MA, right? And, and we know vectors, right? Everyone know vectors here from that math class, that boring math math class, yeah. <laughs> okay, so there are uh, different uh, things that you can do with vectors. You can actually do dot products and you can do cross products. Okay, so just to give you an, uh, remind you guys, this dot product is actually a scalar. It's just a value. Okay, and the cross product is a vector which is perpendicular to both the vectors. Okay, so. Uh, I think you guys remember the right and thumb rule and all that stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, so uh, 
in a vector we have three we have three uh, unit vectors which are basically perpendicular to each other right so we have x axis y axis and uh, z axis which are basically perpendicular to each other so here as you can see we have we are actually using sympy because sympy actually contains all the things that is that I actually used in pi dive because it was once a part of the pi dive and then we actually shifted it up outside uh, this sympy because it was no longer uses uh, no longer uses only the, uh, the sim uh, it was no longer using only the symbols it was doing numerical calculations and visualizations too so it is actually capable to uh, take differential equations and then just give some initial values like the g constant the gravitational constant okay and then you can actually plot it and just visualize it and just see what happens there okay so i'm just gonna do that thing okay and the reference frame so these are just the basics so reference frame is something with respect to uh, you actually define a vector okay so you do uh, x axis y axis z axis so they are actually stationary in a reference frame according to reference frame okay so nothing is uh, absolute here cool so here you can actually define a vector and here you can see that okay i have done actually n is a ref reference frame and x is the x unit vector unit vector is a vector whose length is one just some basic stuff okay and c is a symbol it's a variable okay and we were not able to do that in python before okay you need to actually use a variable so what we are doing is actually we are multiplying a variable with a unit vector okay and then we are adding it and we are saying that okay this is a variable and this goes this multiplies to a unit vector okay so it's like c uh, unit into this x unit axis x unit uh, vector d units into the y unit vector and e units into the z unit vectors so here we are actually defining a vector okay so it is actually represented by this one okay cool here we actually define another vector called vector b uh, quick question how are you getting the math symbols sorry the math symbols is that auto generated or no no it's actually math jax oh yeah Actually, uh, it has a Simpy has a pretty printing support, so okay. that pr pretty printing is rendered in latex, and that latex is rendered by Matrix and Pro. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. So what? So if you if you type, so what kind of syntax are you using in the code itself? So you automatically generate it. Yeah. So we basically generated up. Uh, we actually generated Matrix, and IPython is actually uh, converting that Matrix and printing it. Uh, okay. In this form. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's um, so because the the under sorry the uh, n underscore x or the yeah. sub index. So that is automatically generated. Yes, from the magjax. Yeah. From the magjax. Okay. Yeah. Basically generated the magjax code and IPython actually converted it to this. Okay. Cool. Okay. So here we did added two vectors. So as you can uh, as you guys know, if we add two vectors, we add the scalar uh, symbols corresponding to that unit vectors okay so like here we have the x unit vectors and so if we add a and b we add c plus f into the x unit vector similarly d plus g into the y unit vector and e plus h into the z unit vector okay so here we can see that it is doing that okay and you can actually scale a vector you can multiply uh, a number two or three or a variable and it will be multiplied to all the unit vectors in the vector okay so here basically multiply two to the vector a and two gets multiplied to all the unit vectors and you can just multiply minus one and it will do the same thing okay and we can do the dot product so dot product was a dot b equals to mod of a into mod of b into the cos of theta which is the angle between the vectors a and b okay and we are able to do that into python using sympy so this is just to give you guys 
what Simpa is actually capable of doing and what is actually happening behind the scenes. Okay, because PIDA actually uses all these things and then uh, a differential equation is actually created from the Simpy using the uh, symbolic engine and then we actually give it some initial conditions. Okay, so let's say that we have uh, a vector which is actually pointing downwards. Okay, so it represents the gravitational force. And uh, so if we imagine that this is the z vector which is going downwards and all the other unit vectors are actually zero. So we can say zero into x unit vector and zero into y unit vector. And then we only have the z unit vector which is uh, actually g into uh, z unit vector because g is the gravitational constant. So into the differential equation it will be g because it is generated from the same pi. And then in the pi diagram we actually give some initial value to that uh, symbol. We say that okay g is equal to 9.81 okay meter per a second square and we can actually change it according to our needs. We can say, okay, this is not Earth, this is Moon. So we change that value, but that differential equation does not change. You don't need to do anything to change anything. Just change that initial value, and you are done. Okay. So here we actually you uh, we can do the dot product, and in the dot product, x unit vector into x unit vector is actually one. And you guys can see here that we did dot. A into B, N B I A vectors, and we got the product here. Okay, and similarly, similarly the cross products. Let's say that these two are vectors. My fingers are actually vectors, and you need to do A cross B. So you do A B, and this is the direction of A cross B, and its length is actually A mod into B mod into sine theta. And theta is the angle between the vectors. Okay, and we are able to do this right there. So here you can see that we are actually using the physics module from SimPy. Okay, so we can run a cross product and it will give us a vector. So we have different vector properties. You can add it, you can multiply it and so on. Okay, so we don't have much time. So I'm just going to skim over it and just show you guys what the package is capable of doing. And you, you guys can actually run these notebooks on your own and just change the code whatever you want. And all the docs are actually at okay. That should okay. I'm not actually connected to internet. Okay, so all the docs are actually docs.sympy.org. So you can have all the documentations here. And if you go to the physics module, here is the physics module. And we have everything here. And this is basically the classical mechanics, the Newtonian physics that we talk about. Here you can find everything that you need. Okay. So I'm just gonna skim over it. Just uh, we will not go into uh, deep. Okay. So we have NumPy, and in NumPy is actually for the numerical calculations. You can create arrays, and so uh, SimPy is like for the symbols, and NumPy is for the numerical calculation. You actually assign uh, numbers and then do stuff. So PyDA actually uses SimPy and NumPy. So uh, SimPy generates the differential equations, and NumPy actually does the numerical calculations that we need okay so to actually visualize something you need exactly the values that uh, should be there so let's say that we have a that we have a pendulum okay then you need to have the exact coordinates uh, let's say per second okay and it will then be able to visualize it so we use simpy to actually generate the equation and then we have the numpy it will generate the array which contain all the values that the different points will be going through okay so we will see that later
okay and we have matplotlib it's another uh, library which is into the scipy stack and it actually generates uh, graphs and you are able to visualize uh, visualize some awesome things so we'll just go there and just see this is the dynamics, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So matplotlib inline is specific to IPython notebook, and it tells it that you have to plot the graph into uh, the notebook. You don't have to create another window. Okay, so we didn't run all these cells, so just run all the cells. Okay, let's see it. So, run all, we'll run all the things that are there, and you guys should be able to see the graph. Okay, and this. Okay. Okay, so we have actually generated a graph using the matplotlib and and uh, you can say okay the x-axis uh, the label in the x-axis should be x-axis and label in the y-axis should be y-axis and these are the colors that you want and you can uh, place the legends anywhere that you want okay so this is an example of matplotlib so it's so the scipy stack is very awesome it plays well together so different people develop this but it is just awesome working with these libraries okay so we are actually standing on the giant side that's typical statements okay so just back to the vectors we have uh, matrices okay just and just skip this because uh, a lot of people here are not just uh, physics majors and okay Sorry? Uh, I'm not able to. You don't really need it only for physics. Yeah. You use it for a lot of things. No, no. This is not uh, a normal matrix. This is a directional cosine matrix, which is specific to physics. Ah, okay. Yeah. So this is just not uh, uh, a simple. Uh, okay. Use it on basis. Yeah. So this is basically a directional uh, directional uh, directional cosine matrix. Which is used into the dynamics. It's it is specific to dynamics. But yeah, it's used very often in sort of visualization. Yeah. So, I guess um, so. Angular velocity and angular acceleration. So, angular velocity is the velocity of something which is actually revolving. Okay. So, it is actually a vector, and it is actually perpendicular to the direction of revolving. And we uh, and and we have the angular acceleration, which is the angular uh, which is the acceleration by which a body is actually accelerating its angular velocity. So it is uh, similar to what we have the uh, velocity and the acceleration, which is uh, for a straight line. But here we have the angular velocity, the ang angular acceleration. So these are the basic things. So we have the velocity, we have the position, and we have the acceleration. Uh, which actually corresponds to this. So, because we have a lot of material here, I'm just gonna just uh, just talk about the main headings and just skip over it because we have about three to four hours worth of material. Here. Okay, so we have uh, different forces, right? So, uh, yeah. So, I guess everyone knows about force. So, let's say that this is a bottle, and <coughs> if I actually uh, put it from here to here. I apply the force into this direction and it gets from here to here. Okay, so uh, similarly we have uh, movement or uh, torques which are actually the force which are actually applied uh, to a, a body which increases its angular velocity and uh, gives it an angular acceleration by which it gives it increases its angular velocity, right? And then the equation of motion. So 
Newton's uh, Newton's second law says, states that the force is equal to mass into acceleration. Right? This is the basic thing. And uh, so the uh, so acceleration is actually the difference in acceleration uh, between the starting position and the end position of a body. Okay, and the, it actually gives us the force. So uh, we actually we actually calculate the equation of motion of a body using sim pi. Okay, so uh, so let's say that we have a vector. Okay, like uh, the vector that we saw earlier called A and a vector called B. And we say that okay, A is the acceleration of the body uh, initially. And after we applied some force, uh, its acceleration changed to a vector B. Okay, then we we can actually calculate the force. Force is actually a vector, and it's equal to mass. Mass is actually a scalar uh, a scalar thing, and into the difference into the uh, vectors, which is B minus A. So B is the final acceleration, and A is the initial acceleration. Okay. Yeah. So problem introduction. Okay. So we are actually uh, so okay. We have a human body, and it contains some points here and here, and we have different forces applying here. We have different uh, we have different torques, and we need to balance it. So our aim is to have a balanced human body. Uh, yeah, I'm already about time. So just I'll define the problem statement and then see what happens when we solve it. Okay. So here we have a hu human body, and uh, okay. So this is the distance to which we are applying a torque. This and here, here, and here. Okay. And they, these are the points of uh, let's say uh, zero velocity uh, with respect to each other okay so this part is independent uh, it actually includes a reference frame of itself it includes a reference from frame of itself and this point here have zero velocity in both the reference frames okay so it is actually connecting two parts of the body together and if we apply different torques here or then uh, the body will actually move and it may fall so like we human we have to uh, stand uh, straight okay and after that our aim is actually balance the human body so that it doesn't fall okay so we have different geometry so are you guys actually able to run the notebooks in your systems okay awesome okay so uh, just one more thing uh, we have uh, center of mass okay so center of mass is actually a point uh, okay let's say we have a body okay and its uh, size is uh, uh, okay cool so let's say that we have this bottle okay so the center of mass is actually a point where I can imagine that okay the, all the mass of this body is there at a single point and I can remove this body and place a point mass there with mass equal to that body and I can just apply all the things on that mass and the equation of motion will not change. So we have a, we have a center of mass uh, so that is called a center of mass. We know about gravity, gravity actually works downwards and it is responsible for uh, the body. Uh, so uh, this is the reason the body is actually falling. Okay, we have different torques Dogs are the forces uh, which increase angular velocity. Okay, so let's just go to this uh, to the visualization. Visualization. Okay, just see that. Okay. Okay, so you can actually see all the documentations by running uh, question mark. So we have a session on uh, simpy right after this one. So we are actually generating the equation of motion from SimPy. So we will learn how, what are the function uh, by which we can actually do different things using SimPy. But here uh, is the pi dial, and we have a module called visu uh, visualization module, and it contains all the different shapes. Okay, so uh, as we learned that everybody have a center of mass, 
and we actually assigns a shape to that center of mass okay so let's say that we assigned uh, a sh a shape sphere to a center of mass so uh, it help helps us to actually visualize things because you can't actually uh, visualize things when they are actually uh, masses at a point okay so here we have pi di dot vis dot uh, shapes and we are using cylinder and spheres to represent the body so as we saw earlier so this is a body and it contains two uh, two points we can actually uh, we can actually call them joints and it is actually connected to the ground here and there are the three parts so we will say that okay, this is a cylinder this is a sphere this is a cylinder sphere cylinder okay and we have a visualization frame so visualization frame is the main uh, main frame in which everything is happening so everything is actually related and so a uh, reference frame does that so we have different scenes and scenes we can add multiple scenes to a frame okay so here uh, you you can see the documentation of something in the ipython notebook by adding question mark to it so we have angle shape knee shape hip shape and head shape uh, as squares okay and we are assigning the color black and the radius so this is all in the pi diagram okay <coughs> we can define a uh, squares and these are the uh, things that we have here so we have visualization frames we created different uh, visualization frames for for uh, that so we know that we okay so we have reference frames for body okay and we uh, and like we said that we have two uh, two parts and they have their own reference frames and the point in the middle have zero velocity angular or the simple velocity zero okay so we have different frames here and we can actually define points uh, we can define the point that okay this is head and we can actually set its position so we are actually able to set this position using numpy okay because we have uh, the equation of motions and we are setting okay we just saying that okay just go there and then we have the head which frame so the advantage of doing that is that you don't have to actually use numpy and do this stuff because it's very complicated so here you can say that okay we have a point and you just uh, set its point and just create a visualization frame okay and we do this for each part we have head we have lower le leg uh, okay okay so we have this here okay and this is a human body we have a head and we have represented all with the spheres and the cylinders and we can just uh, run it right into the ipython notebook okay so as you can see that the human actually fall uh, is actually falling because of because of gravity and different joints because the because the position was not actually straight so if it would have been into the same position it would have actually fall uh, uh, it would not have been fallen okay and then we just go to the control that's the last ipython notebook that we have Okay, so here we actually balanced it, and you can actually display the IPython uh, visualization right into uh, the box. Okay. Okay, so this didn't work. Okay, so I just need to run it one by one.
Okay. So now we basically control the human being, and it is now standing straight. Okay. And all this is happening in in the Python world. So if you are a physician, uh, okay. So no, no, uh, if you are a physicist and uh, or a general uh, researcher, so you can actually use the SciPy stack and specifically PyDi to visualize a physical system in which you can add different forces, you can create different bodies and you can then uh, visualize it and see what happens. So we have different functions in SimPy which actually, uh, which actually gives you the energy at a certain point. So you can say that, okay, just uh, tell me what the kinetic energy of this body is and it will, it will give you that. You can say that, okay, just give, give me what the potential energy is. It will give you that. So you, can, you, you are generating it into the computer and just seeing what happens to the body. So that's it. So you, you guys have the notebooks and you guys just run around and see what happens. Okay. So now we have a talk from Senpai.